In this little video, I'm sharing with you my thoughts as I'm walking in nature and getting a different perspective, um, a little bit of my world, if you like. And I've also shared four awesome hidden gems in the Lake District that have not been seen on my channel before. So I hope you enjoy watching this as much as I've enjoyed um, going out there into nature, filming it and um, making and creating this little video for you all. Now, I hear what you're saying, but um... In that tree, that in that in that tree, in that book that I've read, they were saying that the trees need community in order to grow and, and the fungi network. <laughs> well, I might as well finish what I'm saying. <laughs> um, but what they were saying is like cultivated vegetables. Or, uh, I don't know where they said fruit, but anyway, they are like deaf and dumb compared to the wild species. Because uh, the wild species, they communicate in different ways. Um, but the cultivated do not. So they are susceptible for diseases. They don't get the warning signs. And um, yeah, they get a lot of illnesses, which is why they spray pesticides. That's why the farmers spray pesticides a lot on their crops. And what the book was saying, that maybe we need to learn a little bit more from our wild species our wild friends and realise that trees cope really well in, as a community and uh, they all talk to each other and um, the cultivated plants uh, do not have this sound or buzz if you like when they've been studied. I found that really interesting and, um, and I really get what you were saying about humans need to live in communities as well because we although we can be hermits we do need each other to survive that's for sure I agree. Obviously, humans have the English language, or not English, humans have a language, and the trees talk in another language that is not what we recognise. Maybe it's different energy and frequencies. But it's an interesting concept that why we destroyed the forest 
because I don't know if it's because we don't fully understand how they communicate. We were obviously doing it to for we discovered tools and it was a source for ourselves to improve our our village life or tribal life. But I don't know whether we were maybe we were afraid of the properties that Mother Earth gave us and that's why we destroyed it and then we started to synthesize it and as you know my passion about uh, burning witches at the stake uh, that was only for you know cooking some dandelions and we knew back then the medicinal properties of the wild garlic and all the herbs and stuff like that I'm so glad that's coming in back into today's society uh, but yeah, I didn't think that we would do it because we were afraid of it. But maybe that was the case because back then, man, religion, were afraid of witches. the human design um, and being a projector I had a couple of readings uh, and um, well it's described as two ways so one way is that um, a projector is like a Formula One car so it's really really good on the racetrack and really precise and it's built just for that and it can go in really depth so it's really deep uh, really on point really precise but Formula One cars are not so good in suburbia and it's not so good on the motorway or it's not so good um, in the countryside. Uh, so that's my understanding of projector. And then someone else described it as, um, as a... Oh, oh, forgets me now. Oh yeah, um, lighthouse. So the lighthouse purpose is just sat on the edge of the rocks to warn uh, ships. So, the, but it's the lighthouse does its thing regardless whether anyone's watching or is always watching and paying attention. It just does the light at that frequency. So, people who can tune in who need that lighthouse at that time or sees the lighthouse tunes in and then then does um, learns from it and benefits from it. Whilst the lighthouse just carries on being itself. So. When I had my reading, it was super nice that projectors just have to keep on being themselves and they'll attract people. Which is super interesting because that's generally how I've been living my life. So the more I be me, the more people are, are attracted to that frequency. So, and it's really hard because obviously you want to like mix and change in your life and then you you know, the whole thing you want to compare, but you know, I, st I stick by my, by my um, principles and I say it every time I'm in a workshop, which is no judgment, so just because you're slightly different 
uh, like all projectors are different to generators, that everyone's different, they are skilled in their own feeling. Um, so there's no judgment, there's no right or wrong, which is fantastic. Um, it just is. And uh, don't compare your journey to one else's journey, which is fab, because you just have to be you and shining at being you, and then you attract people to come to you. So, yeah, I really like that. Super cool. God. I'm actually really enjoying our walk and our chat. Um, it's amazing. I mean, this is a super long road. <laughs> still going, still going. So we have lots of chats about before we get to these waterfalls. And um, my intention on these videos is to record waterfalls that you've not seen before. Or maybe you have, but just not, oh, I've just not filmed before. Maybe that's a better way of saying it. So I hope you enjoyed my first two. And let's just see what this valley unfolds. Absolutely right. It doesn't matter whether you're ill or whether you're healthy. You never know when your time's up and it's, and it's just incredible that some of your best moments are like in nature, watching the sunset or sunrise or campfire or whatever. I'm not, but I think, I think what we're trying to, we both agree on is uh, you never know when your moment's up. So live life uh, like every moment counts and every experience with friends and be open-minded to try new experiences obviously with respect for others because um, you just never know what's around the corner everything can change in a in a light in a lightning bolt, bolt for sure anyway as you guys know i enjoy my waterfall dipping it keeps me sane um, keeps me anchored i enjoy it. it brings me back to the present moment anyway <laughs> we're still walking and we're still talking <laughs> Why didn't you tell me my hood was on the inside? It's so much better on the outside. You should have just told me that. Now I feel I can breathe. Uh, rather, it all being crushed in my jacket. 